Okay, sorry, I think I muted myself. Okay, girls, can you please type in your name in the comments uh, box so that I can uh, look at it later and get your attendance? Or reversely, can the class rep help me to uh, tabulate the attendance for me? Okay, and let me know who is absent. All right, okay. So today we are going to uh, proceed with another subunit of respiratory system. That is chapter two. Right, we're going to go to 2.4. Okay, so whoever is coming now, please just type in your your attend your name. All right, type in your name, and uh, the classroom can help me to take attendance. Okay, I'm going to share screen now. Okay, one minute. Okay, one minute now. Right, I hope you can see this. All right. I hope you can see this. Please let me know if you can see this. Okay, this type in the comments box. Today I'm going to go to adaptations in respiratory system in other organisms. So we have already seen uh, how it works in the human uh, body, that means our uh, human lungs. So we will continue with looking at the system in uh, three other organisms. One is the frog, amphibian. The second is fish. And the third one is insects. Okay. Are you able to see the screen? Can someone please give me feedback? Okay, so I'm waiting for your response. So class rep later, please let me know uh, the, who are the girls who are absent, all right? You just go through the list there. Yes, you can see. All right, okay. That means I can start lesson, all right? So afterwards, when I finish the class early, all right, if it's before one hour, I will continue with Google Meet to discuss the questions, all right? That will not, will not be recorded. So this will be recorded. So for the advantage of those who missed the lesson and also for those who uh, may need to see again. Okay, so first of all, okay, let's look at how the respiratory system adapts in different uh, systems, uh, in different different organisms. Okay, first of all, let me uh, switch my, yeah, okay. So I will just let you see the screen. All right, okay. Okay, let me uh, maximize this. Okay, now first of all, you will notice our adaptation of the alveolus. Adaptation of the alveolus, all right? There are actually four features that we discussed. Remember, there were four features. Can you type what are the four features? Each one of you maybe mentioned one of the features. One of the features of the alveolus. Why is alveolus, why are the alveolus so uh, suited to carry out the job of uh, allowing diffusion to happen across the membrane? Okay, that means allowing the exchange of gases. Remember, there were four adaptations okay, of the alveolus that allows uh, the alveolus to perform the function of allowing exchange of gases. So what are the four? Okay, you may have to refer back. What's so special about the alveolus? What's so special about the alveolus? Do you remember? Okay, type in the comments box here. What are the four adaptations? It is found in your textbook. If you will go back to your textbook, okay, now refer to this page after we discuss the structures, the, the inhalation and exhalation. After we discuss the inhalation and exhalation, we also look at this part, which is, take your textbook out. This is on page, Yes, page 56. Yeah, I see something here. Leong Leong says large surface area. Yes, because there are millions of alveoli. So the key word here is large surface area. Next one, you have moist wall. Yes, there's a layer of moisture between the membrane. Okay, where are we now? Okay, here, sorry. It, it just, the, the, the thing just went away. Yeah? All right, let me go back to this part. 
for adaptation. We have done all this already. Next one, yeah. Okay, next one, you have thickness of the wall. Yes, how thick is it, Tio? Uh, Lily, Lily Tio. <laughs> is it Shu Hui or which one? Well, how thick is it? Is it thick or is it thin actually? Thickness of the walls, yes, thickness is just telling you the, the feature, but actually the, the, the parameter, but how is it? It should be thin, yes. Okay, so I see some answers here. Moist laid wall of alveolus, thickness of the walls. How thick is it? It's actually thin, yes. The keyword is you must say thin. So as you uh, look here, so the four adaptations, the, the slide keeps on going to this side. Huh? Okay, let me go back to this one. So the four adaptations of the alveolus, they are moist walls. So you must remember this, this, this is uh, compulsory. You need to remember moist wall. That means the alveolar wall and also capillary. Another one is you have uh, the, the membrane is very thin, which is you say one cell thick. When we say one cell thick, actually we are saying that it's very thin. Okay, one more. That is another one is large surface area because you have millions of alveoli. Okay, large surface area. And one more, which is, which is what? Mm, I see the answers here. Yes, capillaries. Something to do with capillaries. You have a rich network of capillaries. The blood capillaries, blood capillaries. Okay, now, so if we look at other animals, other animals, we're going to see the three animals here, the amphibian, the fish, and the insect, they actually have these adaptations as well. For all the respiratory surfaces, you have at least three of these. So, moist wall, okay, moist surface. Another one is the wall is very thin, and another one is millions of it, so you have the surface area is increased. Now, for all, I'm referring to any organism which has respiratory surface, okay? Respiratory surface will have at least these three. Now, number four, we will not include here because certain animals do not have blood. Ah, okay, that's why we do not put the fourth one. For humans, we have blood. That's why we have four, four features here. But here, for when we talk about other organisms, especially like insects, insects do not have blood, correct? And so if they do not have blood, but their oxygen does not go into the blood. Okay, they do have liquid there, which you call the hemo, um, hemo, uh, hemo. What? Ah, oh, what's the name already? Yeah, forgotten the name. Uh, I just it just slipped my mind. Uh. okay. So that 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 fluid there actually it carries nutrients and so on to the body cells. It does not carry oxygen. The oxygen is directly supplied by another system. Okay, not through the liquid part of the, uh, the body. So that's why when we talk about respiratory system in other organisms, so at least one, two, and three. This is true for all. It is not true for the fourth one, which is the rich uh, network of capillaries. It's not true for all. That's why we do not put here. Okay, so remember, if the question asks you what is the uh, characteristics or the features or the adaptation of of the respiratory system in all animals or the respiratory surface of all the other all the animals okay all uh, it says all you have to write this tree only do not talk about the blood because not every animal has blood okay first of all let's look at the amphibian okay amphibian they are frogs so frogs as you know they are organisms they're called amphibians because they live on the land and also in the water when they're young they are tadpoles so they're able to breathe with gills but when they grow older right they evolve into uh, they they change into adults they grow into adults they actually lose the gills and they form the lungs okay okay and that time that's when they come up onto the land so they have to change their organ when they are as tadpoles tadpoles they have gills but when they have uh they are evolve into, uh, they grow into adults, they have to change into uh, lungs. So, but respiratory feature of the lung, uh, of the frogs, they have two, okay? Other than lungs, the frogs also rely on the moist outer skin. 
In fact, in other books I've seen, uh, they also rely on this one, the lining of the mouth, oral cavity. They also have, a, we call an exchange of gases through the membrane here. So number one is the moist, the lungs. The first one is lungs, where they have exchange of gases. So let me write down here. So let's say oxygen diffuses in and carbon dioxide diffuses back into the lung. Okay, so this is the, okay, carbon dioxide, I will put blue color. CO2 diffuses back in and oxygen diffuses to the body cells, into the blood. Okay, right, O2. Okay, another one which also allows that to happen is the outer skin, the moist outer skin, which is here. So under the, actually under the blood vest, under the skin of the cap of this uh, amphibian, there's a lot of blood capillaries. Okay, I've personally seen how people, uh, you know, they 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 tong, uh, or you call it, they cut up the, you know, they sell it in the market. First thing they do is they peel off the skin. So when they peel off the skin, there's a lot of blood. Okay, so here, they're under the layer of the skin, oxygen diffuses into capillary and carbon dioxide diffuses out. So it's very important for them to have a moist surface because it is only through moisture or surface, uh, there's a moisture, then these gases can dissolve. So the key word here is dissolve. If it is dry, the gases cannot move across. It has to dissolve and later on diffuse. So the key word here is dissolve and diffuse. Okay, so the second one is the moist of the skin. The third one is actually, some books have also written here, the lining, lining of the oral cavity. Okay, here, lining of the oral cavity, which also allows oxygen to diffuse into the blood and carbon dioxide to diffuse out. So there are three. Okay, but here you just follow the textbook should be good enough. All right, okay, let me show you another picture. So you will see that, okay, when the frog breathes, actually, it makes use of its floor of the mouth here. You will see that the frog actually, uh, this floor of the mouth, we call the, this is the floor of the mouth. Huh? It will move up and down. It will move up and down, actually, is to push the air. So you see here, uh, this is uh, exhalation. All right, you see moving up and down this part here, up and down. It actually like moves to push the air into the lung. Okay, let me change the color. So red color. Right. So it pushes, it pushes the air. So it goes up, it pushes the air inside the lung. Okay, this is inhale, inhalation. So another picture here shows that you have the three. All right, exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen happens through the skin through the lungs and also through the lining of the mouth. We call it oral cavity. Oral means mouth. Oral cavity. Okay. Now then, I have a video here. Okay. Before that, let me go through the notes first. Huh? Let me go through the notes here to make sure we cover everything. So the skin is always is very thin. So we already seen the first picture. Right? Thin, very permeable to gas. That means it allows the gas to pass through. Permeable means allows, allows it to go through. It's always moist. The second feature is moist because you have a layer of mucus which causes the respiratory gases to dissolve. I see, dissolve and diffuse. And number three, uh, the, these blood capillaries, it, it, because amphibians have blood, all right? So the, the this one, we can talk about blood capillaries. Blood capillaries are there to increase the diffusion rate. More blood capillaries, more surface. So more gases will be able to come in. And of course, don't forget there is also the surface area. Surface area is increased. Huh? Surface area because of the folded. You see, the lung here is not smooth. It is highly folded, this part here. So it's when it's folded, all right, and it's folded, fine, that surface will become more. Right? Surface become more so that diffusion can happen at a higher rate. Okay, so this one will have four because it has blood. There are four features here. Okay, let's look at the video, right? I hope the video, uh, you can hear the sound. 
I have to pull out the microphone here first uh, so that you can hear the sound. Let me check. Okay, this is a video. All right. So let me click on this video. Let me know if they can hear this. Okay, are you able to hear one more time? Wait, uh, hang on, here. In this module, let's learn about thing through its mouth. Unlike humans, no sound. Amphibians... Okay, no sound. I think I don't know what happened. Okay, I need to do some setting here. All right. Okay, carry on. Uh, sorry, I just hang on for a while. Okay, my thoughts. Okay, my test, my test, my test. Okay, you can hear me, right? You can hear me here. Okay, I'll try again. Let me try again this one. Oh, now can hear. Now you can hear me, yeah. But can you hear the video? The most important is, can you hear the video? Okay. You would have noticed that though its mouth. Can you hear the video? One minute, huh? Respiratory organs in amphibians. Have you observed a frog or a toad sitting quietly? You would have noticed that though its mouth is closed, the flow of its mouth keeps going up and down. Okay, you can hear. This is because it is breathing through its mouth. Unlike humans, amphibians can breathe through lungs, through their skin, and also by using gills. Unlike birds and mammals, amphibians are cold-blooded, so they don't use up any energy for keeping their bodies at a constant temperature. This means their cells aren't working as hard as warm-blooded animals like us, and they don't need as much oxygen. In this module, let's learn about pulmonary respiration and cutaneous respiration in amphibians. Now, don't worry about the terms. Just now we said we uh, the frog has got two, isn't it? One is breathing through the lungs. The other is breathing through the skin. Okay, the one breathing through the lung is called pulmonary. 
pulmonary circulation, pulmonary respiration, that means pulmonary refers to the lung, pulmonary. The other one through the skin is called cutaneous. Okay, let me write the word here. So it's pulmonary. Pulmonary means the lungs. Okay. The other one is called cutaneous. Cutaneous means the skin. Cutaneous, Q C U T A N U O U S, it means the skin. Okay, so you will see these words. Do not get so freaked out. Huh? It's actually not difficult. Cutaneous is already pertaining to the skin. Okay, let me continue. Respiration through lungs is known as pulmonary respiration. The frog breathes through lungs while on land or when it is floating on the surface of the water. It takes in air through the nostrils into the mouth by lowering the floor of the mouth or the buccal cavity, keeping the mouth closed. Next, the nostrils are closed and the passage between the mouth cavity and lungs is opened. The floor of the buccal cavity is raised and air is forced into the lungs. Okay, so it's very simple here. Now, the mechanism you don't need to know in detail. You only learn it in Form 4, okay, when you go to next year for biology class. So what is basically here is the floor of the mouth, we call the buccal cavity, buccal cavity. The, the floor will be raised. So when you raise it, it's like pushing the air. It pushes the air into the lung, okay? So that will be inhalation for the frog. All right, okay, the, the, the details you don't need to know yet, but I want you to see, because this video is quite good, you can actually see what happens. The floor is raised, the floor of the mouth is raised, and it actually pushes the air into the lungs. Okay. Exchange of gases takes place in the lungs as well as the lining of the buccal cavity. Oxygen diffuses in and carbon dioxide diffuses out. Amphibian lungs are a bit different from our lungs. Our lungs are spongy and full of tiny little sacs called alveoli. These alveoli increase the amount of surface that oxygen can enter our bodies through. So uh, high, uh, we call it large surface area because we have many, many millions of alveoli. Okay, but for the frog, actually, they have less. They have less number of alveoli, but it doesn't matter because they have the skin to make up for it. So they cannot rely 100% on the lungs. The lungs, uh, they don't have enough alveoli to able to support the diffusion of oxygen until it's enough for the body to use. And also don't worry, the, lungs, the, the frogs are not as active as human. So they do not need as much oxygen. Okay. Since amphibians don't need as much oxygen as humans, they don't have as many alveoli either. The way amphibians use their lungs is different from humans too. Humans have a diaphragm beneath their lungs that causes the air to rush in and out. Okay, so revise here. The diaphragm, remember, it is to uh, contract and relax to be able to change the air pressure. Remember, okay? So that's why it's important to have the diaphragm. When it goes up or it goes down, when it flattens or it curves upwards, it actually changes the volume. When the volume changes, the air pressure changes and that's how the air gets sucked in or the air is pushed out. So this is called passive breathing. We don't really push the air out or push the air in. We let the air suck in by itself because of low air pressure inside the thoracic cavity. Okay, but for the frog, it's different. They actually push the air inside. Okay, you will see here. Amphibians don't have diaphragms and they have to force air into their lungs by moving their mouth like we do when we are swallowing. Okay, so the difference here is they do not have diaphragm. They don't have diaphragm, they cannot change the air pressure inside the body. So in other words, they cannot change the air pressure. That what happens is they have to have something to push the air inside. Okay, we don't, we don't have the air moving by itself. For humans, we have the diaphragm, we change the air pressure inside, so air moves in. But for the uh, frog, it's different. They have to actually push in the air. And the pushing comes from the floor of the mouth. Okay, they raise it and they push the air inside.
respiration through the skin is known as cutaneous respiration. The skin on amphibians is very thin and is richly supplied with blood capillaries. The water carries oxygen with it, which diffuses into the capillaries and the carbon dioxide from the blood diffuses out. That's why most amphibians have to live in moist places where there's water nearby. Okay, so this is the video that I wanted to show you, which is I find it's quite interesting and it's uh, very well done uh, because you have all the animation, right? Which sometimes we don't have the time to do it and we also may not need, may not have the, the knowledge to be able to produce such good videos. Okay, so here if you want to look at the alveolus or the, the lung of the this frog, you will see that, all right? Let me enlarge this. So this is the lung, right? This is the surface here. And the inside, you will see it is highly folded. So this is one of the features that allows uh, the surface area to increase up. So you can put in this one of the feature is highly folded, all right? You see it's folded in and out and in and out, in and out. And even this surface got further, further folding inside here. Okay, and this is through the skin. So this is referring to the lung. Now this is through the skin. You will see that under these layers of skin is a bit, uh, because I, I maximize it, I will find that, so it's a bit mong mong like that. Okay, so these are layers of cells. These are layers of cells. And you will have diffusion of oxygen or exchange of gases through the surface. And this is blood, all right? Under here, there's blood. So the Oh, this is actually, sorry, this is actually the blood vessel. So the gases go in and carbon dioxide goes out. Okay, so there are two, right? At least you can talk about these two. I don't need to talk about the oral cavity because not in your textbook, it doesn't matter. Okay, now let's go on to the fish now. Okay, the fish, now fish, it has a special organ which is called the gills. Okay? In Chinese, we call it sai. okay? So this is the respiratory structure of fish. And only with gills, they can actually uh, increase the surface area and to able to allow oxygen to enter the blood vessels. Let's look at the structure first. If you were to look at fish, uh, they actually have got eight gills, okay? Four on each side. There is four on this side and there is four on this side. Okay, so actually there are four pairs. Altogether, there are eight. And if we were to look, you know, in, in, in the drawing, uh, if I would draw a fish, uh, let me show you how it draws. You normally don't see the fish that way. You only see the fish like this. All right, let me draw. Uh, let me try to draw. Okay. All this, uh, let me check for space. Uh, all right. Okay. Let me try. All right. Let me draw a fish. So usually you will draw a fish like this. Okay. Usually you draw the fish like that, right? With the tail. Okay. Like that. And of course, with the fins, lah, the dorsal fin and so on. This is the pectoral fin. Okay, you will draw this. You will draw the, this is called the operculum, which is the eye. All right, this is the mouth. All right. If you were to flip this open, this one can be open. You can take your hand and you can open this up. Once you open this up, you peel it open, you will be able to see structures like this. So it's like a curve, like a C. Okay, this thing, like that one. And then all this, you can see the red, red, red color one. These are the gills. Okay, wait, I should draw it this way. I should draw it this way. This is the gill arch. This is the gill arch. And the, the, the uh, this like that. This is one. I'm just drawing one on this side. Okay, it looks like a C shape like that. So this whole thing is called the gill. This whole thing, actually, there are two rows. If uh, I think this picture is better. Uh, let me go back to the text focus. Now, there are actually two rows. You will take out one of it. There are actually two rows. So it's like a V-shape. So it's like that. Okay, so here is blood. And then uh, here you have got projections or more. Projections. Wait, wait. Huh? Here, this is the... That's a V shape here. Then you will have these projections, projections like membranes like that. 
which are running perpendicular to the gill, like that. This is to further increase the surface area. Okay, now the whole thing is called gill. The whole thing that you see here, I'm holding that. This whole thing is called the gill. But if you want to look at one of these, again, okay, I'm trying to tell you how to label it properly. If you're looking at this, this is called a filament. It tell, okay, this little thing is called a filament. This long thing is called a filament. And then if you look at the further, they want to max, uh, they want to what they call that, uh, mag um, magnify this. When you magnify this, you will find uh, this part, pieces and pieces like that, perpendicular. They are called lamela. La la. Okay, so that means it's like this. This is gill, the whole thing is gill. One of this is called a filament. And if you want to label the lamella, it is actually referring to this thing here. Okay, I've got a red color. Oh, no, red color, cannot see. Purple color. This one, this black thing is the lamella. Okay, lamella. So the purpose of having lamella is actually to increase the surface area. See, everything also needs to increase surface area because you want to make diffusion faster. So allow to get the allow you allow, want the fish or the whatever animal is to get enough oxygen. Okay, so let's look at this one. Ah, hilang already. You always go up to here. Huh? Something wrong here. Okay, let me let me maximize this. Okay, here. And the direction of blood, you see, blood comes from, okay, of course, you don't show the heart here. Always the heart pumps it to the lung, all right, for us. And our for the fish, the heart also pumps it to the gill to receive oxygen. Okay, now, so the blood is flowing through. You see, when you see it's blue color, it means this the oxygenated blood. Always remember that. And then when you see it is red color, it means oxygenated blood. So when it's colored red, that means it's already picked up oxygen. Now look at the direction of flow. Huh? The water is flowing from here, left to right. Okay. And then you see the blood is flowing in opposite direction. Now this is important. This is actually the best design. This is what we call the water flows in one direction like this. Water flows and the blood actually flows in this direction. Okay, this is the blood flow. This is the best way to receive maximum oxygen in the water. This, this kind of mechanism we call counter current. You will learn that more in form 4. Counter current mechanism. Okay, I'll show you another picture to make you understand what it means by counter current. It's like this. i just show you what I've prepared. Ah, look here. Ah, here. Now, counter current here means this blood that is blue color, that means it's got less oxygen, correct? Blue means less oxygen. It has less oxygen. Okay, so it is going to pick up oxygen now. But now you see water flows in. This is blood flow. Blood flow is like this. Water flow is like this. So here is the most oxygen. In the water, the before it passes through the lungs, but be, sorry, before it passes through the gills, this is the one that has the highest amount of oxygen. So it is going to meet the what the, the blood that has less oxygen. Okay, so if you do it this way, they notice that hundo, a lot of oxygen will be able to be absorbed by the blood. This counter current mechanism will be able to allow more oxygen to be absorbed. So you will see this diagram. Huh? If counter current is the best, okay. Counter current flow here. This is the, uh, this is the what? This is the water containing oxygen, and this is blood. Blood coming here is zero. That means less less oxygen. So once it uh, meet like this, uh, more of the blood, uh, more of the oxygen can go in. Okay, later on you will see the detail in form 4. Like, I do not want to count, uh, do not want to, uh, what do you call, uh, confuse you too much first. Now what happens if it's same direction? If the water goes in the same direction with the blood, the blood that is less oxygen, you will find that up towards the ending, ending now uh, you see the diffusion is very little already. Okay, because both sides, uh, 
both sides, the oxygen is about the same concentration. So the diffusion is very little at the end here, very little. So that means it cannot maximize the absorption of oxygen. If they have the same direction, going in the same direction, water flow like this, same direction with the blood flow, they find that at the end, uh, it will even get less oxygen. But here, if you do counter current, that means it is like opposite direction. The water flow like this, the blood flow the other way, they will get maximum oxygen. Okay, so the how you want to uh, learn it, you would see next year to see uh, whether uh, what's how it actually works. All right, so counter current flow is always better than cold current or con current. Con current means together, they flow in the same direction. Counter current flow, you are able to get maximum oxygen. Absorb, okay, so they, if the question asks you as KBAP question, uh, let's say absorb maximum amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide oxygen in the water the most uh, perfect one uh, the best to get most oxygen okay so now the oxygen is wasted if you have cold concurrent that means same direction you find that some of the oxygen cannot go in cannot diffuse into the blood all right okay so let's look at uh yeah this is a one uh, let's look at this uh, filaments so you need to remember the names the rows are called filaments the whole thing is called the gill Okay, those of the fine, fine structures are called filaments. They have many flat projections, further projections called lamella. Okay, so this is one filament and this is a lamella. Okay, do you see that? Uh, each one, each pen, may each pen is lamella. So that will to increase surface area. Okay, so increase surface area is one of it. Number two, moist. Moist, no problem because fish are always in the water. Definitely would be moist. Number three, thin. Yes, the surfaces are very thin. Okay, so three already done now. And number four, uh, number four is the what? The capillary, blood capillary. Definitely, it has a rich network of blood capillaries. Okay, so done that. Now let's look at insect. All right, insect. Uh, insect, another third one. Now insect, let's look at insect. Do you know how, where are the breathing uh, parts of the insect breathing what they call breathing holes <laughs> all right now you see here the breathing holes uh, let's say this is the insect uh, at the side of the body they don't have a nose the air doesn't come in through the front the air doesn't come in through the head uh, all right so actually they have these little holes called spiracles at the side of the body so see how many there are there's one here at two Three, okay, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are actually ten pairs of spiracles. Okay, I give you an example, a simple cockroach lah. Okay, cockroach, the chicha, not the chicha, the what? <laughs> the lipas, right? There are ten on each side. They call ten pairs because there are ten here and there are ten here. So the lubang for the air to go in is not in the front. Okay, it's not in the front. It's not in the front of the face here. There's no nose. They actually go in through the front part of the side of the body. So usually here, the three pairs here were in, uh, for inhalation. And when the air comes out, it comes out through the back part here. And okay, this is exhalation. Okay, this is not only to body to kill. Uh. The body... Of the inside is actually divided to three parts. If you remember your form two system, uh, form two uh, classification. You have the head. This part is called the head. Then you have the middle part here, which is called the thorax. This is called the thorax. And the last part here is called the abdomen. Abdomen. Okay, so they have two to three. Uh, spiracles on the thorax here, I think three lah. Abdomen, the rest of it is at the abdomen. So you will see little, little holes at the sides. Okay, that's where the air comes in and also air goes out. Okay, let's look at the structure now. If you look carefully at the side, this is the abdomen and this is the lubang here. This we call the spiracle. The spiracle, actually that's a valve here to open. Okay, you can open and close the valve. Your bathtub. Okay. Then this tube is called trachea. 
Very similar to the word that we use for our human respiratory system, the trachea, same word, same letter, okay, same. And further, this trachea will be further divided into smaller tubes called tracheal. And this one not, bron not bronchial, ah. for human is bronchial, but this is called tracheal. So many of many you call tracheals, okay, tracheal. And later on, it's going to actually uh, communicate. Um, uh, actually, this black tracheal will bring in oxygen to the body cells. They are in touch with the actual body cells. So oxygen is actually brought in directly to the body cells. No need blood because they don't have blood. They have we call it the liquid called uh, hemo, hemo, what are they? Hemo, I can't remember, I can't remember why the name is. Okay, so it's, it, they have the liquid, but the liquid is not red, right? If you squish uh, uh, inside, you find the liquid there is uh, colorless or maybe a little bit whitish. That is the liquid there, all right? And uh, this one, it doesn't have, it doesn't have blood, it doesn't have blood to convey the oxygen. So this oxygen actually diffuses in the body cells through the, Mem uh, to this vacuole, the, sorry, the tracheal, the membrane of the tracheal. Okay, so let's get the, the, the notes here. Again, it went missing. Okay, one minute. You will come back again. You will come back again. Yeah, here. Wait. It keeps on the next one. Here. The respiratory system of insects is the trachea system made up of air tubes known as trachea. So the trachea, now trachea has got uh, something to make sure it's always open. Remember we had this cartilage of our body for our trachea, but for insect, it's not trachea. Okay, insect, they just have uh, substances to keep it all. It's called chitin. Okay, chitin. This is to make sure that the tracheal is closed up, it's not collapsed. So later on, this tracheal will be, uh, you know, it will be branch out, branch out into tracheal. So this is your tracheal. Okay, so you have chitin substance there to make sure it's always open. Okay, the air leaves or enters the tracheal through the breathing pores. The lubang there is called spiracles. Okay, and the opening and closing are controlled by valves. So there are valves actually here to open and close to allow the air to leave and enter the body. Lah. So during inhalation and exhalation. So trachea is further divided into tracheoles. Tracheoles are thin. They are also okay, so see the just right, number one, the, the membrane is thin. Okay, the membrane on the tracheole. Number two, they are more so there's liquid inside the body there. Okay, to increase the efficiency of gaseous exchange, that means to increase the diffusion. Lah. Okay, and then you have the large number, uh, number three, large number. This is for surface area, to increase surface area. So you can see all these three features are always there, no matter what animal it is, even for insects. For insects, you do not have blood, so you don't talk about the rich network of blood capillaries. Okay, for the other organisms, you have to say, if it has blood, you will say the rich network of blood capillaries as well. So there are four features for the rest. For the and insect, there will be three. Okay, so this is to facilitate, to help the exchange of gases through diffusion. And some have air sacs. Okay, what are air sacs? Air sacs are this. Yeah, you don't, it's not, not shown here, but here, air sacs. So this is the spiracle, right outside here, spiracle. This is outside. This is the inside. So this is trachea. T stands for trachea. And the small, this one, this is the tracheal. Tracheal, and on the tracheal, you see the, like a bubble like that. Okay, this is actually an air sac. This air sac is to actually help to move the air, help to move the air in and out. Okay, and it's directly in contact with the cell, so oxygen diffuses into the cell, and carbon dioxide diffuses out to be removed. So that is the air sac. Air sac. I think sure it's not an air sac. Oh yes, yes, here, yes, here. Right, this is the air sac. Uh, let me put a different color so you can see the black. This is the air sac to help to uh, facilitate the or the changes of uh, the air, exchange of air. So this is another diagram to show you specifically the holes are at the side. And roughly about nine pairs, uh, sorry, 10 pairs for 
cockroach is ten pairs. Okay, and check whether you have any questions here. All right, hemoglobin. Uh, no, no, not hemoglobin. For the other one, for the the liquid inside the body, it's not hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is referring to okay, Stella. Good question. I right, actually you brought a good important thing. This is a red blood cell. Red blood cell. Ah, uh, red blood cell. Now the one we have here is hemoglobin. Definitely yes, correct. Okay, the other one is hemo. Ah, that one is what I can't remember the name. Ah. in the liquid, I'm talking about the liquid, liquid inside the inside. Hemo, what a hemo, not hemo. Ah, hemo something. Can't remember the back word. The 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 the, the space is called hemocell. Okay, let me check. Ah. I have to book here just one minute. The one for the inside, I can't remember. Just escaped me uh, today. <laughs> it just escaped me today. I can't remember. For the life of me, I cannot remember what is there more. There more what, uh, yeah, let me just check. One minute, just give me a minute. For the, for the inside. Uh, for the inside, this is called, just to let you know. Uh, uh, ah, yes. Hemolymph. Uh, yeah. ah, hemolymph. The liquid inside here, I'm talking about the liquid. Yes, okay, so it's good that you not hemorrhoid. <laughs> hemorrhoid is tongue, ah, in boise, ah, that one. Was it not now? So, can you tell me, uh, Stella, the word hemo actually means what? Why do you have so many words like hemo, 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 hemolim, hemoglobin, and then even hemorrhoid also? Ah, okay, you type the word hemorrhoid. Can you guess what the hemo means? What does the hemo mean? Okay, since there's something to do with all this hemo, hemo thing. Red blood cell, all right, you have hemoglobin, right, inside. In the inside, the liquid that is not red, not red, it's not red, it is whitish color, it is blue, uh, no, whitish or yellowish or even clear. That is the liquid inside the body of an inside. Uh, that will make it, that will be the moisture. That will be the moisture which allows the substance to pass through. Ah, yes, good. It's a prefix that refers to blood. Whenever you see the word hemo, ah, hemo, there's a, there's a, 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 there's a discipline of science called hematology. Ah, that means they, they, what they do is they, uh, they investigate or they research into the composition of blood. So when they do blood tests, ah, it's called something to do with hematology. You're testing what is in the, what are the substances inside the blood. Correct. Okay, Stella, very good. It's referring to Hemo. When you see the word hemo, it means blood. Okay, but even though it's hemo limb, this one is doesn't have blood. This is their blood. This is their blood for the inside. Just like that, their, their, their blood is not red. That's all. Their blood does not have hemoglobin, but it's still liquid. Okay, right. Any questions here? Okay, so we are more or less covered what I wanted to do. Make sure you remember these three important features. Okay, while waiting for your questions, maybe uh, it will take some time for the questions to come through. I want you to remember whenever the question is for adaptation. Adaptation means the special features. In respiratory system, for all, you have this one, two, and three. Definitely, you must talk about being moist, moisture. There is moisture. Right? For the inside, the moisture will be the hem or lymph. For the the fish, the fish definitely is the water that is always, it will never be dry, right? And for the frog, the surfaces of the, there's mucus on the surface of the skin that will make it moisture, uh, moist. Okay, the second one is always thin. All the respiratory structures are always thin. So that to allow diffusion to happen at a high rate of us. Okay, next. It has large surface area, so you will always have a lot of it, whether it's alveolus or whether the surface is highly folded or whether the blood vessel, whatever it is, there will always be a lot to increase the surface area and that will also increase diffusion. Okay, the, the purpose is always to increase infusion so that a lot of oxygen can go in, a lot of carbon dioxide can go out. Okay, and then for other organisms, you have an additional fourth one which is the blood, a rich network of blood capillaries. This is only true when they have blood vessels. So you cannot talk uh, of this one for inside. Okay, all right. Any questions from any one of you? Any questions? 
Okay, so uh, for here, do not forget to do your homework. Okay, let me go, go through your homework. So I think today I will not continue at Google Meet nah, because the uh, time is already very short. So I'll just let you know what is your homework for today. Okay, take out your workbook. Okay, I will check your answer to another lesson. Uh, today you will have to finish page 39 and page 30, uh, page 40, 39 and 40. And I want you to think about this question. Maybe I can give you a bit of pointers. Ah, what? Look at this. This is a k question. Let me give you a k question. Now, in one experiment, Raju holds a cockroach and submerges the head of the cockroach into a container containing water for 30 minutes. So it's like basically trying to drown it. Okay? I assume like, it's trying to drown the insect, like, right? What happens to the cockroach at the end of the experiment? Explain your answer. Can someone have a kind of response here so that I can see maybe you don't need to have to type the, the full answer, but I want to see what actually is coming to your mind when you see this question. This is a K part question because it's not direct. You don't have the direct answer in your book. Okay, but understanding what I just told you just now of the structure of the insects, the respiratory system. What will actually happen to the cockroach at the end after of 30 minutes? You're trying to drown it. Huh? I mean, if you put your head, let's say you put our head in our water for 30 minutes, uh, definitely uh, we will have drowned already. Don't say 30 minutes. Uh. We can't even hold our breath for more than one minute. The most I can do is 45 seconds. <laughs> okay, uh, That is already quite quite difficult already. Uh. So 45 seconds, about one minute at most. But some people have the ability to go more than that because through training, uh, like those divers, Divers who are this, um, you know, in Korea, we have a lot of ladies who actually uh, go into the water to collect, collect this uh, sea urchins and all this sea, uh, seafood. They actually can go hold their breath for more than about at least three to four minutes. Yeah, that is through training and through experience. Okay, so anyone can type in what do you think has happened to the cockroach? Okay, I'll give you two pilihan, right? Number one, one, cockroach dies. Number two, nothing happened to cockroach. So, can you type your answer there? How many say die? How many say nothing happens to the cockroach? Try to think of what you have learned. Cockroach still alive. Okay, Corsin say cockroach is alive. Any other answers? A little bit of uh, interaction from you. Cockroach still alive. Okay, Patricia, good. Uh, let's say uh, T Stella says alive. Some more? Nobody say die. Yeah. Do anyone say die or not? Nothing happens, nothing happens, alive, okay, alive, good. Any more? Seeing, anyone say die? Nothing happens. Okay, right, let's cut it short. Yes, you are right, nothing happens. So, this is one mark lah. You say nothing happens. Now, I want you to explain. Don't forget, you just answer the first part on it, what happens. But explain your answer, why nothing happens, or why is it still alive? Okay, your answer is correct, nothing happens. That means the cockroach is still alive. Okay, I want you to try to explain what happened or why. Why? Explanation is important. It carries marks. Okay, the head doesn't have breathing organs. Okay, right? So uh, oh, that's not complete. Lah. You need to write more things. Doesn't have breathing organs. So so where is the breathing organ then? Okay, so just, just don't uh, try not to just concentrate on the negative part of the answer. You have to say, if it doesn't have this, so where is it? Or how how you want to eat? Because you need more information in order to get more marks. You need to say, we need to let we need to get more information from you. Uh, you need to write more things. Okay, so I will check your answer in the next lesson. All right, okay. So is there any more questions that I can tackle or I can discuss here? Okay. Any questions that I can discuss here? If not, ah, cockroach breathe with trachea. That is a that is a good idea. Yeah, but I also need more. Not only just trachea. Trachea talking about the inside. Talking about the inside. But we actually, when you put your the animal in in the water, why it doesn't die? Because not talking about the inside. We're talking about the outside. Yeah. Okay. Where is the breathing structure then? Where is the place? for them to bring in air. Okay, you gotta talk about that. Okay, open circulatory system, the fact that they breathe through little holes on each of the body segments. 
Ah, okay. Yeah, the keyword is where is the breathing hole? The breathing hole is not in the head, but the breathing hole is at the body. And remember, remember Raju only put the head inside the water. They did not put the, the body, okay, or the thorax and the abdomen. All right, okay. So I will check your answers. All right. So in the meantime, you please do their, oh yeah. Okay, Jia Tong, you have an answer here. Oxygen enters their bodies through small openings located on their thorax. Ah, not only thorax. Ah, you're missing one more answer. Thorax and what? Thorax, not only thorax. Thorax is only got less, uh, what do you call that structure? You need to talk about that, that lubang there. The lubang is called what? The lubang is called, it starts with an S. It starts with an S. You need, I need more uh, information. Yeah, if you want to get more marks, you need more, more information. So there are, there are small openings called what? Located on their thorax and something else. Okay? So, yeah. Yes, correct. They're called spiracles and they're located not only in the thorax, but thorax and uh, sacs. Uh. No, not sacs. Sacs is inside already. So located on the thorax and abdomen. All right? Okay? So we will uh, see you next lesson. I'll see you next lesson. It's already 12.30. Uh, all right. Okay. So I'll see you next lesson and I'll check your answers. Please make sure you do your homework. All right. Okay. Uh, class rep, please give me your attendance. Huh? You can check through here uh, the, the people who have key in their names here. Okay. Right. Thank you, girls. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. See you next lesson.